Let's take a look at how we search for items in a hash table. Searching is obviously important uh, if we wish to simply find an item, but it is also important if we wish to delete an item from the table. We first have to find it before we can remove it. So searching and deletion are sort of intricately linked, uh, and I want to talk about those um, together. So searching for an item in a hash table um, that uses separate chaining is fairly simple. We hash into the location and then we traverse the linked list until we find the item or we reach the end of the list. If we find the item, we report uh, back that it's found. Otherwise, we report that the item is not found. Searching for an item in a hash table that uses um, open addressing uh, and thus probing, um, it, it can be straightforward. First, we try the home position and uh, if the item is not found, then we can try each of the probes in turn. And if all the probes are exhausted, then we know that the item's not uh, in the table. Uh, this method, however, may fail if we're not careful as to how we remove uh, items from a, a hash table. So in deleting an item, uh, basically if, again, if separate chaining is used, we just hash into the location. We begin to traverse the uh, linked list and find the item, and then we remove it from the linked list. Or if the item's not there, we, we, we just um, report that it's not there. Uh, for hash tables that use um, open addressing and probing, uh, deletion um, must be done in a particular way so that we um, don't lose the ability to, to actually remove items. So let's take a look uh, at an example uh, that shows deletion. So in, in the, the leftmost uh, graph, graphic, um, B4 was not inserted into its home position. Uh, because A4 was in that position. And so, as you can tell, we applied linear probing and uh, we couldn't find a spot here, right? So we plugged B4 into location five. Now, subsequently, uh, A4 was deleted from the table. And, uh, and so now an attempt to find B4 uh, hashes into B4's location and finds that it's empty and reports uh, back that uh, B4 is not found. And that's in fact not the case because B4 is right here. Um, so uh, another situation similar to this one occurs if we were to remove uh, A2, which is in this position, and then any, um, any search for B1 would initially hash into location one, but A1 is there. And, and so we would probe linearly and go to the next position and we don't find B1 here. And so we report that B1 is not found when B1 is in fact here. So how can we get around uh, this issue? So key deletion in, in closed hashing or open addressing, uh, requires that we uh, be careful as to how we remove information. So when we remove a data item, we will have to mark that location with a special indicator that, that shows that an item was previously there. This, uh, uh, this indicator is often called a tombstone. And, um, and, and, and what it does is it keeps us from terminating a search prematurely. So as we saw in the previous, uh, in, in the previous slide, we would not find either B4 or, or B1 because they weren't hashed into their original uh, location. And the thing blocking their original location was subsequently removed. So, um, so if we mark uh, deleted uh, items with a tombstone and we need to insert an item, no problem. We simply, if we find a tombstone, it does mean that the, the, uh, the location is empty. So we simply overwrite it and we add the item. 
Uh, obviously, um, there's a drawback to this. If we have too many tombstones, we're going to be doing this almost constantly, and we need to be able to, to keep track of, of our performance and keep our performance up. Uh, and so periodically, we'll want to go through the table and basically move uh, remove all tombstones uh, so that uh, the searches go faster. So let's uh, take a look at how we would use a tombstone. Uh, so beginning in the leftmost picture, we, we, uh, we see that um, A1 uh, was placed in its correct position, as was A2, but B1, we hashed into location one and something was already there. And then uh, B2, uh, we went into two and someone was already there. So we went into location three. And then uh, the same thing with A4 and, and, uh, and B4. And then subsequently uh, we remove um, we remove A4. So basically what we're saying is, is we're, we're removing this item. And when we do that, we will mark uh, that location and we'll just do it in all subsequent positions. We'll mark that location with a tombstone. Now an attempt to find B4 will hash into location four and we'll actually find a tombstone there. And this is an indication that the search uh, should continue uh, until uh, we either uh, find an, an empty location or we explore all available probes. So in the case of searching for B4, we would hash into this particular location, uh, but we find that there's a tombstone there. So we add the next probe and we look for B4 in the next slot and we find it. So th this, uh, this same issue can happen if we were to delete uh, A2, for instance. Uh, if we were to remove A2, uh, this would render it difficult to find B1 if we don't actually use a tombstone. So using a tombstone will mark that location as having been previously occupied. And now when we try to find B1, we will hash into the first location and uh, A1 is there. We will probe into the next location and we realize a tombstone is there so we do not terminate the search we probe the next location and there we report that b1 uh, has been found finally if we want to search for c1 in this case um, we would hash in again to a1 uh, it's uh, it's it's busy it's uh, it's occupied so we probe to to um to look to slot two, but that has a tombstone, which means um, we don't terminate the search. We go to slot three, that's occupied. And we go to slot number four, and that has a tombstone. We go to slot five, that is occupied. And it's only when we get to slot six in looking for C1 that we actually terminate the search and we report that C1 is in fact not in the table 